Well, hello there, gracious gang. This is the Gracious Guest Show, and I'm your humble host, Mike Creedy. Thankful that you are joining me today, and wherever you are, by the way, however you're listening to this program. Uh, kudos to you. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, gracious Gang, by the way, is a term that is coined, actually, by a couple of my students. So I want to give a, a shout-out to uh, Julia and to Alyssa. And uh, if you guys are listening, uh, it is official now. The listeners of this program uh, are the Gracious Gang. So thank you so much, because you are sort of just by default, I suppose, by tuning into this, a member of the Gracious Gang, indeed. So welcome to the show, and um, today I want to kind of lay a little roadmap, basically, I I guess, and uh, talk a little bit about wonder, which is a recurring, th- not just a recurring theme, that would be not, that would be a little disingenuous, I suppose. This show is about wonder. Uh, the impetus for it is wonder, the experience of wonder, and, and what that means. Here's the, the sort of little hint. I don't know, okay? If by know, you mean have it all figured out and just be a treasure trove of answers to people's questions about a particular topic, I don't know. You know, if, if that's the the way we're going with our definition of, of what it really means to know what wonder means. That being said, I think there's a lot that we all uh, sort of know from experience, maybe, or have these common experiences that sometimes we don't really consciously think about or maybe describe or try to talk about. Um, but, you know, when you when you do start talking about it with somebody... There's this sort of aha moment where even if you, you know, it, words always fail, right? You know, you try to describe this incredible meal you had or you try to describe this incredible trip, the sunset that you saw in Scotland and the Highlands or the uh, experience of falling in love for the first time. That might be a topic we'll explore some other time. But just to keep it a little more maybe simple than that, but but also show how these things are um, all around us, movies or books or um you know, certain memories that we have. So some of these things, I was thinking about them, and I, I decided, since I like to do list shows sometimes, I thought I would do Mike's Top 10 Doorways to Wonder as just, like I said, sort of a roadmap, or, or maybe better put, a um, like a, just a, a sort of a, a, a brief sketch, you know, or a signpost, just to kind of think about this uh, overall experience that I, I like to go into on this program and, and explore uh, through some of the different topics I, I uh, cover. So 10, here we go, Mike's top 10 doorways to wonder. And the order here might be a little questionable from day to day. I might change around a little bit, but this is the order that they came to me in at least. Number one, uh, yeah, I'm going to do it that way. I'm not going to do like a countdown. It's just going to be 10 things. So number one, the smell of the seasons. I don't know if you were expecting that or not. And I think you might know what I mean right away. The smell of the seasons. There are um, distinct sort of smells when a season is changing, at least I, I kind of notice, that just, I don't know, it catapults me somewhere other than where I am right at the moment. <laughs> you know, um, and, and um, you know, so just to kind of take them in order a little bit for me personally, um, at the beginning of the year, like when winter's really kind of kicking in, it's, you know, there's that, that crispness in the air. You're already getting from fall a little bit and I'll finish with, with fall, but like winter, you know, you, you, you just, you detect little things, you know, you detect, um, in a sense of barrenness, it's not necessarily something that has to depress you. It can, it can sometimes be a real drag, but you smell, maybe you catch a little whiff right before a snowstorm starts. There's that kind of almost like you can smell the preparation, <laughs> like it's it's developing, it's about to happen. Um, there's the anticipation usually that comes with that that's triggered by that smell and just some of those things like the, the, the leaves that, uh, that are dead and kind of rotting on the ground, uh, which is kind of gross, right? Like winter's in one sense all about death and everything's falling apart and it's cold and it's dreary, but um, there's those those you know, smells, I think, especially around a snowstorm that are just, you know, kind of there that, um, 
uh, you know, it, it, you may not be dwelling on those particular specific smells, but they make you, you know, kind of a little nostalgic maybe. Or if it's around Christmas time, right, you know, and you want it to be a, a, wind, uh, a white Christmas, um, you know, so then spring, of course, you know, you get the, a lot of different smells like the, the flowers, right? Um, the, uh, just the air itself, I swear, I, I, you know, when it's getting warmer and you can just smell that, like the air seems to have more life in it, you know, it's, it's like, there's something there, not so much a lack of it. Um, and it's, it's just, you know, the, the, the new life, the blooming, um, a little bit of warmth, but it's not too warm yet. You know, then summer, there's all sorts of stuff, uh, fresh, cr uh, fresh cut rather, uh, grass, you know, or how it smells in the summer right after a rainstorm. Um, and it's, it can be a little muggy and a little heavy, but it's, it's like, um, you know, or at the beach too, you know, you, you get the smell of the ocean and, and all these kinds of things. And, uh, the sea itself being at the ocean itself, that whole experience is a, is probably my one of my biggest doors to wonder, that's its own thing. I don't have it on this list. I have a whole separate show I did uh, last year about that. If you want to go back and check, I think it's like 28 or 20, episode 28 or 29, somewhere in there. Um, so check that out later. But, uh, and the smells of summer, you know, like you go to a baseball game and you smell the hot dogs or the, um, you know, just that kind of atmosphere you get when you're uh, in a in an environment like that for some big sporting event or something, you know, the, the smell of the baseball field. Um, and then in the fall, you know, obviously the, the leaves, the air starts to get a little crisper. It's not as heavy, you know, you're not at winter yet, but the leaves are changing and you have all those beautiful sights and everything, but there's just like some, some little hints you catch of, of, uh, the coming fall and, uh, maybe some apple cider, right. Or, you know, something, some spice kind of in the air, that kind of thing. So, you know, and I'm, I'm not really that eloquent maybe at breaking all this down because I was just thinking of all this recently but I think what's really behind it all obviously is is not so much the smells themselves but the experiences that they drum up in your mind or the um uh the memories too and we'll get to that in a minute so anyway number one the smells of the seasons there's just always something about those that open me up to something bigger than whatever the mundane thing as I'm that I'm doing at the time uh, might happen to be. Uh, number two, movies. And some, obviously, look, some movies are better than others. Some movies are absolute trash and don't deserve being seen. Some are masterpieces. I'm not getting into all that, but just movies themselves, the experience of uh, entering into that realm of imagination that way, where, um, you know, you uh, you get, in a sense, fed this this vision that somebody else uh, put together in a sense, um, and all the stuff that comes with it, the music, uh, the special effects, the experience of going to the movies, which I always really enjoy, um, you know, that you, you set time aside and you go to this special place where this, this kind of magic can happen. Um, and it doesn't always happen, but sometimes it can. So you're there and receptive to some sort of experience that makes you wonder and marvel and, and, you know, uh, kind of ask those questions, sort of what if, you know, um, then also uh, books, number three, similar, but but a little bit, you know, of, of a different side here, I think. It has some similarities with movies in that, um, you know, the realm of imagination. But with books, obviously, you know, you can use much more, I think, of your own imagination um, to... This is, by, by the way, one of the problems, I think, when I read a book, at least, after I've seen the movie of it, you know? Like, I read Jurassic Park after I saw the movie uh, when I was a kid, and it was like, well... And I've read it a few times since then. But it's very difficult to read it without imagining the characters in the movie and the actors who played them and the setting, even if it's really good and if it's what you would have thought sort of yourself or it's kind of in line with your imagination, sometimes it's radically different, you know. Um, but books themselves, what I find amazing about them as sources or doorways, I should say, into wonder is that you're entering into the mind of another person, really. I mean, your imagination's in play and you're using your imagination, but you're also just getting to sort of receive and experience that person's imagination because they wrote this book. And this might be more the case with fiction than nonfiction, obviously, but even nonfiction, the way that someone else paints a picture, the way someone else describes something even uh, historical or, or uh, nonfiction isn't maybe the way you would. So it, it it's like a, real, a relational experience between you and this author. A dialogue you know goes on if, if you're reading uh, and getting the most out of it. Um, so that's number three. Number four, travel. And I mean pretty much anywhere. But travel has always been an experience in my life, as my dad always put it, and I always appreciated this, that travel is always like a microcosm uh, of life. 
And through that can kind of become this sort of macro cosmic experience where you sort of project out to everything else, you know, from those particulars, as we often do, we abstract, you know, from particulars. Um, but, you know, you go, you go somewhere, you're with someone you love, maybe you're traveling, especially if you're first, you know, sort of uh, you know, dating somebody or if you're first married and you're traveling, sometimes they see it, you know, you see each other at, at your best and your worst, right? Like maybe everything's going great and the great is greater than, you know, any particular day back home might be just because this experience is so unique. But also if something goes wrong or your tickets get lost or your baggage gets lost or you you have uh, these are all real things, by the way, that have happened uh, to me. Ask Christine or you run into just, you know, some some person who's very disagreeable somewhere, you know, or a waiter, you know, you have a negative travel experience or your kid gets sick or something like that. It really intensifies the experience, right? Because it, you know, some of those support systems or those things you're used to maybe aren't right there at your fingertips. So it kind of, it can be good or bad, you know, but, but there's this opportunity for this wondrous experience uh, when you travel, obviously it's, it's like all bets are off. Um, so that was number four. Number five doorway to wonder for me is uh, I put food, but then I added disclaimer, good food. Bad food's not so much a doorway to wonder as it is a doorway to um, maybe the uh, restroom or the emergency room <laughs> if you get food poisoning or something. Um, but but good food, you there's just something about uh, this restaurant experience. I'm thinking off the top of my head in, in Assisi when my wife and I were in Italy, sitting out on this balcony just overlooking God knows how many miles of, of Italian countryside and the mountains in the distance. And it was just, I mean, I, I can't, I can't imagine that memory ever diluting, you know? Um, but that's, that's just the food there, you know, just the view itself would have been great, but this meal is this, this sort of homemade meal, this little restaurant and, you know, the, the, the people there and the staff and this sort of shared experience over this food. Um, that's why I think we see it show up. It's a motif throughout all literature. It's a motif in just human life. You know, you gather, we gather around meals. That's like the most seemingly fundamental and basic kind of human event, I think, to, to participate in. And we all know that, obviously. Um, but it's more than just, it's, again, all these things, it's it's there's like a synergy with wonder and i brought this up before the experience of marvel of wonder it's always more than just the sum of the parts you know it's not just you know um good view good weather conditions plus food that tastes good equals all those things together no it, it's it's more it means something it means something more somehow um and food really has a way of doing that uh i think we all can appreciate that. Uh, just like we can, I think, six, music. Uh, music does the same thing. Uh, and I'm going to move through some of these, you know, to get to the last three. Seven, memory. And memory kind of binds all these together. But, you know, think about, you know, first music. That song that you just, when that song comes on, that your day just stops for a minute, right? That favorite song, like, oh, I love this song. What happens to you? Think about that for a sec, right? Like, what happens to you? You, like, all the stress... All the, maybe not all of it, but, but, you know, at least some of the stress, the worry, the anxiety drifts away. You, where are you? You're at that prom that was so great. You're uh, at that wedding. Maybe it's your wedding song. And that song comes on and you just, you know, you're having a fight with your spouse and it's, uh, you know, or maybe you haven't even noticed that you guys have been drifting apart. And that song comes on and you just have a moment where it's like, you, it's like you're, you're able to see from a higher pitch, you know, you're raised up to a higher viewpoint and you're like, Whoa, hold on a minute. You know, maybe there's more to my life than work. Maybe I haven't really been spending enough time with my kids or, you know, maybe, maybe I need to go a little easier on myself sometimes. And maybe I'm too down on myself. Uh, whatever it is, just, you know, these, these, uh, these experiences, it can be so simple. Don't, don't let them slip by. Um, I guess is what I'm saying. Don't, you know, don't miss the beautiful, the wonderful by ignoring the mundane. Cause it's oftentimes precisely through those mundane things that we, that we fall into these, these greater, uh, expanses of human experience and memories like that too, you know, and memory you know, can be, we can kind of remember things incorrectly, you know, and, and all that. But, um, but in, in, in the best memories, 
those memories of, of, you know, you smell something, this goes back to the smell of the seasons, right? You know, I, I, I get a little, you know, smell on the air in the fall of like cider or something about the, the fall air. And I'm just in my mind, it's, it brings back all these memories of when I was a kid and we'd have these fall festivals and stuff in my hometown, or you go to like the marching band um, competitions or in high school, or you go to the football game and, and what it feels like and smells like there, you know, it, it broadens your life, right? You know, where you remember that life is about a lot more than just this one terrible moment I might be going through right now, or the stressful time. Those come and go. They always do. And we know that. We know that deep down. You know, life, life is worth it. Life is worth living because there's these moments that we don't always maybe pay attention to, but they come back and they, they travel with us. We bring them with us along the way. You can bring the bad stuff with you too, but look, that stuff piles up anyway, right? Um, so this is, you know, I'm always encouraging on this, this show and my, my sort of uh, outreach here just to, how can we just have, you know, seize on, you know, seize those moments or rather let those moments seize us is a better way of putting it. Fall into these moments of wonder, let go, you know? Um, so uh, the last three then, they all connect it together, I think, just to finish uh, with it. Because my website, you know, thegraciousguest.org, if you haven't checked it out, go ahead and check that out over there. Uh, you'll see when you go there, you know, that the, the theme that I oftentimes focus on with this whole um, discussion of wonder uh, are the, in, in theological terminology in the Christian tradition, uh, what are called the transcendentals, those things that help us to transcend, to go above and beyond, faith, hope, and love. Faith, hope, and love, the theological virtues, you know, help us uh, in a particular way, I think, encounter the transcendentals, beauty, truth, and goodness. Um, you know, faith, and, and not to get into a big, you know, um, theological argument here, just, just, you know, faith, the idea of uh, what do you believe? What do you believe in? You know, what do you, what do you sort of, where do you put your anchor, <laughs> you know? Uh, where do you where do you sort of you know drop anchor? What what do you rest in? What what do you believe in, in your deepest deepest heart? What do you believe in? Who do you believe in? You know where do you where does um, where does your trust you know find its ultimate depth? Right, that's important to think about. You know, and to reflect on that, and that can open up a, a big doorway to wonder. You know, because it's an important question, and I I don't care who you are, all of us ask this. Uh, whether you whether we realize it or not, every time you watch a movie or read a book, okay, uh, on some level, something in you is going to get engaged about what do you believe in? What do you believe? What do you believe is true? You know, and why? Why do you think that's true? Is it just because that's the way you're raised? Have you researched it? Are you holding on to a grudge? What What is it? You know, but that's a good question to ask. You know, what do I believe? Maybe just sit for five or ten minutes today and think about that. You know, what do I believe in? What do I hope? will happen. What do I, what, where's my hope aiming at? Hope is an optimism. Opt, anybody, you know, optimisms. I couldn't care less about optimism. Optimism can sometimes just be, you know, it can be okay, but it can also just be a blind ignorance of the facts. It can be, you know, like the world's exploding around you. You're like, I think it'll all work out. That's not what hope is. Uh, a lot of people get this mixed up. Uh, hope has is really nothing to do with optimism. Hope doesn't even have anything necessarily to do with ever really th genuinely believing in, you know, that it's going to be okay, quote unquote. Hope is so much more than that. Hope is, is holding, it's connected to faith, but it's really this, this, you know, um, ascent of the will in a sense to the, you know, belief that at the end of the day, everything has a purpose, you know, we're, we're here for a reason, you know, and that you know, grace will prevail. You know, good will triumph over evil. I don't know what that's going to look like. It may not happen today. I may not see it. But darn it, I I hope for it. I hope for it. I hope for, you know, um, the light to prevail over the darkness. And you watch, I mean, look, you watch Star Wars or, you you know, you watch Star Trek or you read a good book or you're, you know, you're you're watching that mini series that you're just binge watching on Netflix, and you just you, you know you like it, but like deep down, part of it too is you hope it's gonna, you know, everything's gonna basically things are gonna come out on top. Light's gonna prevail over darkness. You know, it might have a sad ending, but you hope that that some good comes out of it, right? You know, someone learns something from it. 
uh, the characters. Uh, maybe maybe even some characters die, but somehow, you know, they're they're part of something bigger than themselves. And um, you know, there's a little bit of trust, obviously, that, that's important in that experience. But hope, you know, that's another one to ask yourself. Maybe what do you hope for? You know, what goals do you have in life? What do you hope to see? You know, what do you what do you hope your life will be like ten years from now? You know. Um, and then, you know, what are you doing today about that? Are you contributing anything to that? Are you uh, closing yourself off to different opportunities that might help you? You know, and it's, again, not just goal setting, not just, just sheer your own willpower. There's more, there's more than one will in play here, you know. So that's something to think about. And lastly, love. Uh, and I think everything just comes down to this. I think the greatest doorway of all to wonder is love. You know, because at the end of the day, I think wonder this is the theologian maybe in me speaking a little bit. I think the experience of wonder, the experience of marvel, ultimately is an echo of eternal love. Not love, not a feeling. You know, feelings come and go. Love is willing the good of the other person. Willing the good of another. Just because it's good for them, you know. Um, I want what's best for you. Uh, and what's best for you may not be what's best for me. Sometimes, you know, in terms of like what I might want, um, you have a crush on someone and you just somehow come to realize that it's just not meant to be, you know, you really, really care about that person. You love that person and they don't love you back. Maybe, you know, you don't dominate them. You don't, you know, force them to love you. You know, there, there comes a moment where if you truly love them, you might have to let them go their different path. That might be the right thing for them. Maybe it means intervening. Maybe there's someone in your life who is destroying themselves or destroying themselves somehow. Um, and we get caught up in the whole, you know, spirit of the world, you know, like, I don't want to be judgmental. Y you, darn well, you, you darn well better be judgmental about their behavior if you really love somebody and they're behaving in a way that's destroying themselves. Um, uh, it's not judging them. You know, if you're a real friend, if you really love somebody, you're going to have the guts. And I'm not preaching. This is really hard for me, and I probably don't do it nearly as much as I should. Um, it's a real hard thing for me. Um, but I just, I know it's true, though, you know, that if I really love somebody and they're making some decisions that are destroying themselves, you know, or, or, or you know, hurting, you know, their uh, whatever, you know, hurting their career, hurting their family. Uh, I, I should intervene. I have to do it tactfully, you know. So that's, that's you know, the tough love thing. You know, love love has a lot of requirements, quite frankly. But it's, you know, whether it's our friends, our family, uh, what love ultimately is, you know, and I, I think this is the, the connection to wonder, is it's, it's ecstasy in the proper sense of that word. I don't know if you know this, folks. Ecstasy comes from an ancient word. Uh, in uh, Greek, it comes down through, I think, in, into Latin, too, um, in some form. I can't remember off the top of my head, but I believe in Greek, you know, stasis, you know, ek stasis. It's, it's the idea of standing outside oneself. That's what it means. You know, um, resurrection in, in uh, the Christian tradition, you know, in the Greek language, anastasis, you know, anastasis. It's, you know, to rise again, you know, like, like or to you know, rise up again, this this upward standing of the body sort of is the idea of resurrection well stasis you know this ek stasis you know out of oneself or standing outside um that i think is really the key and that is precisely what i think all these doorways you know find us go when we go through them you know what well, what do we find on the other side i think we find an experience even just for a second sometimes just for a moment maybe you didn't even know what really happened where you sort of got outside yourself a little bit and you're able to get a better look <laughs> you know um and i'm not talking about astral projection or some like out of body experience maybe you know the out of body experience um, seems to happen sometimes to people in different ways. But uh, I think anytime when you have these little touch points and throughout life where we encounter wonder, the wonderful, the marvelous, what really I think often seems to be the common thread with all of them is I get outside of myself. I get outside of my fears, my worries, my hangups, um, whatever it is, you know, and just, just live. <laughs> you know, and those are the moments, you know, I think precisely where we are most able to do something selfless then. So maybe pay attention to those moments in your own life and maybe try to just, you know, be responsive in the moment. 
when you're outside of yourself like that and you're less selfish and you're less self-absorbed, that maybe that's precisely the best moment to act on making that phone call to that person you've been meaning to for a long time and just, you know, I'm, oh, I'm too busy or writing a letter to somebody or going to visit somebody or just, you know, um, maybe, um, if you're a, if you're the praying type, you know, pray for somebody at that moment, just do something for somebody else. Let wonder guide you into that. And I think that's really at the end of the day, what, uh, ultimately I hope the gracious guest movement, whatever you want to call it, helps us to think about a little bit more and, uh, and maybe do a little bit more. Well, anyway, that's going to do it for today's show. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, This is the Gracious Guest Show. I'm your host, Mike Creevy, uh, signing off, wishing all the best to you, Gracious Gang, wherever you may be. Check out the website, thegraciousguest.org, and you can get the podcast, blog posts, and uh, other fun things over there. Feel free to check it out and tell your friends. And until next time, don't forget to wonder. Take care.